Janik Journal's back. Part two of the Intec B twin build. Um, you saw me shaving the head, set my compression ratio last time. I ended up doing them all, 80 thousandths, taking 80 thousandths off all of them. Uh, it's weird, I don't quite understand it, but um, even though they had a discrepancy in CC's factory, the 80 thousandths got them all right to where I uh, wanted them at 32 CC's. Next up, we're running dual valve springs from EC carburetors. That's a side-by-side -side of the valve springs. Um, you'll notice this one's a much tighter coil, so it's going to be a lot softer. Um, and this one's a double wound with the inside diameter being quite a bit smaller than this one. Um, here is a stock head. As you can see, this is the intake guide. The, uh, these valves fit over there, uh, valve springs fit over there, no problem. However, once you run the dual, the smaller spring uh, will not fit around that. So we need to do what I did on these two, which is throw it in the bridge port and make it so we can have plenty of clearance for the inner spring of the dual valve springs. Let me show you how we did that. So let's head over to the bridge port. Here's the head. Um, what we got is the rotary table. Um, so you gotta set it up, make sure everything's nice and concentric with the quill. A little bit of setup time, not too bad. Got my little 3 16 end mill in there, ready to roll. I don't know if you can see what I got going on. I got my depth already set. So let's turn this thing on. We're doing this one take. Turn this thing on, little WD. It's only cast aluminum. So I'm gonna take my plunge all the way down. We're doing this in one swipe. All the way down, I got my stop right there. Lock the quill. Start turning the handle, wrong way. Start turning the handle on the rotary table. It's that simple. So we'll make this thing one full revolution. And that's gonna be another one done. And it's the next day already. First thing I did, I already managed to cut myself, so this isn't gonna be a good, this isn't gonna be a good start of the day. All I was trying to do is take this governor, whoop, take this governor assembly off, and I managed to cut myself. But um, yeah, you just pry this thing off. Um, you know, use a, any kind of pry bar type deal. Get under there, pry that off. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna get that that stud out of there. I could leave it, um, or I could cut it, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Anyways, what we're really doing next, um, that was just a little bit of a, a fill-in deal. What I'm really trying to do next is um, put these heads on the block. I'm not gonna really assemble any of the block with the head gaskets. And then I'm going to work on fitment of, somewhere under here, fitment of the intake manifolds. So that's really what we're gonna, what we're gonna focus on next. Here's what we're working with right now. We've got the heads bolted on, um, soft, just snugged up more or less. Uh, copper head gaskets in place. So our heads are sitting where they're going to sit uh, on final assembly. And the reason we're doing this is because the intake manifold is not going to bolt up. You can see that it needs to be brought down into the valley uh, a considerable amount. Um, some people watching this video probably are pretty good with math or an actual machinist and they know these things. But what I'm thinking is if I take 80 thousandths off of each let's say flange surface of this intake manifold, um, which is how much I took off of each head, everything's gonna equal out. You know, I take 80 thousandths off of this manifold and it's gonna bring bring this down 80 thousandths in line with the head and same with the other side. I don't know, maybe Pythagorean theorem needs to be used here. Uh, I didn't get that far, but what we're gonna do is just go with 80 thousandths for now. And instead of trying to take 80 thousandths off of the intake manifold, which would be the probably the preferred way, um, I'm going to take it off of the head uh, where this flange meets right here, uh, the intake flange meets. Uh, it's much easier to jig the head and the bridge port, uh, set it up for the fly cutter. Uh, it's much, much easier to set up a head. I don't even know how I would try to grab this thing. Um, I would never get consistent. It, it just, it, it could slip. I'm not even going to try to mess with it. So we're going to jig the heads up in our brand new Chinese angle plate. So we'll see how that goes. And this is how we got the head jigged up. I got that um, angle plate set up 
fly cutter again. Smaller fly cutter, same bit. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm just going to take a 30,000 swipe at it here. Um, and then uh, keep going. Just do two 30s and a 20. Go nice and slow. Try to get as good of a finish as I can. Uh, I'm going to do both heads. And man, I hope my measurement's right because uh, it's a pain to jig these things up. So if i got to take more material off and it's going to be a trial and error thing, this is going to be a long process. So, let's start making some chips. And we got the heads that just came off of the bridge port on the block, took the other ones that haven't been touched off. Um, and I'm happy to report that it is lined up just perfectly. The math worked out, which really wasn't math. It was just taking the same amount that I took off the heads, take it off of uh, where the intake bolts up. And you can see it's got a little jiggle to it. You know, these bolts aren't tight. That little jiggle is, uh, you know, shows that these these things are in nice hand tight. You know, I didn't have to force them to barely get the, uh, to bar barely get them caught. So everything's nice and centered. So definitely happy about that. Got to do the other two, throw them in the bridge port. And I forgot to mention, I got my cams in from Comp Cams. They are the Cheetah Grind. Um, they came in pretty quick, I think about two weeks. Um, their, their website isn't that great, but you call them up. Customer service is perfect. They answer the phone. They get you squared away. They know what you need. They got these things ground up and shipped to me within like two weeks or something like that. Um, and they also, I don't have, oh, they're on my, they're on my part shelf over here. They also had, uh, he's got a pretty good connection with uh, the ARC, I guess. So they were able to get um, all the connecting rods. So I'll probably go ahead and I got some plastic gauge. So I'll probably go ahead and uh, plastic gauge these rods, make sure the bearings are, uh, are just right, uh, plastic gauge them on the crankshafts and get these short blocks going. And here's one of the crankshafts, just clamped to the table on the counterweight there. That uh, that sets it up nice so I can check my spec with the plastic gauge. I already did, I already um, spec all four um, connecting rods. So I put them actually, I don't know if this really matters, but I actually labeled which one's gonna go where uh, on each crankshaft so that I'm not like, you know, so when I check it and I clamp it on or tighten it on, it, it's going to go back in the same place that I spec it at. Um, so this is how the process works real quick. It's just this thin little piece of plastic here and uh, you clamp it down. As you clamp it down, it expands and you can see the different thicknesses. So the thickest one, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, the thickest one would be two thousandths, three thousandths and so on and so forth. Um, so, and that's the mark, that's what the, the plastic basically leaves. So then what you do is you, you take this mark here and then you line it up to the uh, to the corresponding, you know, thickness. So this actually spec'd out at two one thousandths. So yeah, two thousandths is a little tight. After following everything it says in the book, you want to be around three thousandths. Um, it says no less than 25 ten thousandths, but um, we're a little tight. I called up ARC for a little bit of support and they said, um, he said he should be good to go with these motors. They're pressurized oil systems. Um, you know, my motor's not going to live at 8,000 RPMs. It's, it's, I'm going to run it fairly easy, to be honest. Um, so maybe the pressurized oil and, you know, that this crankshaft's never run. Uh, neither one of these motors were, never, were ever fired. They were brand new out of the box. Um, so, you yeah, know, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these pistons on the connecting rods and uh, pretty much get one step closer to getting these short blocks done. One more important thing to mention, you can see those two dots, one on the rod beam and one on the rod cap. Those have to match, those have to line up to each other when you're assembling this. And in addition to those matching up, each cap is also matched to a beam. Um, that's what it says right on the back of the booklet here. I didn't know that before, um, but I've also only done like single cylinders mostly. So. Um, yeah, in addition to those dots lining up, you also can't take the caps off and uh, mix match them with another rod. Something very important to remember. Otherwise, you could, uh, I'm sure you could wreck them if you didn't know and you just start torquing it together. So, just something else to keep an eye out for. So, I've had the camera off for a little bit. As you can see, the workbench looks different. Uh, let me show you a couple things that I've been doing in the meantime. 
nothing too major. I'm not going to call it porting because I know people are going to have a field day if, if I say I ported these heads. I didn't. I just cleaned up some of the rough casting marks. Um, it's These are brand new heads, brand new valves, of course. I did lap them, just a little hand lapping. They, they cleaned up pretty darn good. Uh, you know, there was no pitting or anything. Um, as far as the uh, cleaning up the casting marks, I got this kit from summit it's like a long reach uh die grinder thing kit but it's for aluminum only it, it's uh, i don't know it's just way too aggressive the thing just wants to bounce around like crazy so i use these for a little bit of the rough rough work uh but i primarily just used these uh sanding cones that you can just get at harbor freight and these things are fairly long with the arbor they come with so it actually even with the exhaust port it still fits in so let's go in the exhaust. It still fits all the way up, pretty much all the way up into where you need to get uh, to. And this is like $20. It comes with all these cones, different grits and everything. Um, okay, and then one more thing on the pan that I had to do. The only real modification I'm making to the pan is that this old governor shaft that was in here, something like that. Taking that out and then um, to fill the hole, I'm just tapping it quarter inch pipe tap. Um, you don't need to drill it out anymore. It's sized just right. Um, but just an FYI, there's a bushing in there, like a steel bushing. I didn't realize that. So I started tapping and then this bushing spun. And um, then I was just able to use the tap to pull this bushing out. It broke in half when I tried to get it off of the tap. Uh, you know, I had to squeeze in the vise. But um, in any case, yeah, quarter inch pipe tap works perfect. I'm probably not going to get a good focus on the threads. But they're in there recessed pretty far. So I'm gonna need um, I'm gonna need some some plugs that have um, like an Allen uh, Allen key in the end of it. Um, you know you're not gonna be able to get a regular square headed uh, pipe pipe plug in there because it's just recessed in too darn far. So I think that's about all I'm gonna do for the pan. So with all that being said, we're pretty much at the point for assembly. You can see this one block. I already have the uh, the crank in, pistons, connecting rods, uh, cam. And of course the lifters are in there as well. So we just gotta do the same to this block. I'm gonna try to give you little guys a little bit of a action shot here. Got the tripod set up. So uh, yeah, first off, just gonna slide the crankshaft in. Um, got some uh, assembly lube on it, of course, and all the surfaces. After that's looking good, just gonna go ahead and uh, push in both the pistons. Nothing too fancy here. Um, and then next up, slide. I'm gonna slide the lifters in. Um, when I slide the lifters in, I just kind of load them up with assembly lube, and they pretty much stay up um, out of the way of the cam to slide the camshaft in. And then, of course, you just gotta line up these two dots to orient the cam uh, to make sure you're in time. Otherwise, you're gonna have all sorts of issues and then last thing is to torque down the connecting rods and last thing i'm planning on covering in this video is uh, i got all the heads the other ones all set up with the new valve springs and uh, retainers so i'm just putting the valves in got my old trusty homemade compressor um these are the parts from ec carbs in case you guys are interested. But yeah, what I do is, um, you know, and this might be common, uh, probably everyone does this. I go ahead and I compress the uh, springs quite a bit. And then um, then what I do is I'm gonna take some of this assembly lube and basically just use it as grease, put a dab down in the in that half of the cone. And then I'm gonna try to do this one-handed, but I'm probably gonna not get the shot. Go ahead and set it on in there, get it in the groove. Um, Again, this is much harder to do one-handed than it is two-handed, but what that assembly lube is doing, and I'm not sure if I have it compressed enough, but that assembly lube is allowing that cone to stick onto the um, valve itself and stay in the groove where you need it to, so that uh, once you start unwinding the compressor, um, everything's right where it needs to be. So I'll go ahead and do that with the other half, and then these heads are all gonna be ready to roll. That's gonna do it for this video. I know these videos aren't the greatest uh, in detail. I'm really not trying to give a step-by-step -step how to build these. I'm more or less just showing some of the things I'm running into, maybe a, I don't even wanna call them a trick or two. Um, but you know, just what's to be expected in a build. Um, this is some of the oil I'm using for assembly. Keep in mind, these are gonna be um, 
flat tap at cams. So you need the high zinc content. Um, gonna need, you know, gonna have to run like um, VR1, or you can just add zinc additive to any old oil. But uh, I'm gonna leave a, a description. In the description, I'm gonna leave all the aftermarket parts I'm using so far. So looking forward to the comments, see what you guys have to say about it. Um, probably one more video on building the motors and then um, they should be ready to fire up after that. Still waiting on some parts, didn't order them yet, but I still do need some more parts before I move on. So anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.